Gareth Daly again. Cowens. Norman Freud against Bold in the centre. Platt. Oh, he's done it brilliantly. Wonderful goal. David Platt. A great year it's been for him. And he continues this amazing run. Eight goal, eight games now in the league on this ground in a row in which Platt has scored. And this must be one of the best. It was a brilliant turn then. A terrific technician who lost David O'Leary and buried it past John Lukic. Ormond Droid. Is it Platt again? It still could be David Platt. And Tony Adams was able to stand in the line of the shot to save Arsenal. And Villa break free from the shackles to have a corner. Daly, maybe Villa will score from it. Derek Mountfield, they have! Arsenal in a line, look at the linesman. Lukic in disbelief. And just at a time when Aston Villa's lead looks so fragile, they spring the Arsenal offside trap with Tony Daly's cross and a solid header from Derek Mountfield. He was unmarked because Arsenal expected the whistle. They didn't get it. It's Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 0. George Graham won't be uh, disappointed about the energy that his team have expended. But the end product hasn't been there. Might be a goal here, though, simply through weight of numbers. Groves. That's Adams! But there still may be time. 2-1. And he wants to get the game restarted. Has it come too late for Arsenal? Groves got the cross, and Adams was there first. Took a flick off McGrath on the way in. So Samways then with this corner for Tottenham. Sedgley at the near post looking for the flick on. And there is that flick on and Lily up. And Spurs in the lead. Forrest unable to defend from that flick on at the near post. And Lineker did his work. Yes, a good foraging run by the Forest. Give a club! Saved by Mills, but club on the rebound and Forest a level. 1 1. The back heel there by Stewart. Samways, but Spurs unable to get this away. Hodge, nice little touch there. Oh, and a great touch there. By Nigel Clough, Hodge continuing his run onto the left foot now. Plenty of red shirts are up, and at the far post is Crosby. And Forrest, with two in three minutes, now go into the lead. That's going. Spurs still searching for this equaliser. Forrest defending well, but there's Lineker. Oh, and a marvellous save by Sutton. Terrific piece of goalkeeping. Spurs then making this double substitution. Paul Walsh and Gary Stevens are on, but it's Forrest in possession. And here's Parker, and here's another chance for Forrest. He's gone round Mims, and Forrest 3 1 ahead. Substitutions may well have confused Tottenham for a moment. Parker was in. So the last seconds of the game now. Gascoigne making a good run here for Tottenham, but he overhit the cross. It's knocked back in again, Stewart's in there against the crossbar, Lineker from close range. But Forrest looked likely to make it a worthy celebration for Brian Clark, who's 1,000th game as manager. Staunton, and Barnes is in! Liverpool, a goal ahead. Barnes 
against McLaughlin. Looks though he's got the legs of the defender to me. And that looks like a penalty. Indeed it is. Rush against Bob Boulder. Great save from Boulder and away. Charlton still playing their football. This is Mortimer, the substitute. And Steve McKenzie. Oh, acrobatic and very effective. Crystal Palace went into the decade hailed as the team of the 80s. They finish it with Steve Coppell claiming his players' priority at Arsenal on Monday will be to keep the score down. Don't take his words too seriously. Palace are discovering a degree of resilience, securing victory over Norwich through Ian Wright's 11th goal of the season. Swung in and they've left Atkinson, who scored. A real surprise for Southampton, Daly and Atkinson. Right out, nicely taken, and that's a good ball through, Wallace. That'll be a penalty, surely. Letizier into the favourite corner for 1-1. Long right out got up and Atizier got in 2 1. Shirtliff is unmarked and that's 2 2. Even though the championship race is probably down to three teams now, Chelsea could still propel themselves back into contention with a good January after a horrible December. They took the lead at Luton when Kevin McAllister dug out a cross for Kevin Wilson to steer over an off-balance Alec Chamberlain. Scoring goals isn't a problem for Chelsea, it's defensive weaknesses that have been their undoing over the past few weeks. They conceded 16 goals in their previous four league matches, so it was only when Kerry Dixon's cross was guided in by Wilson for a second goal that the visitors could start to feel a little more comfortable. Chamberlain was perhaps entitled to ask how his defenders had managed to fall for the same trick twice. As it turned out, Chelsea were able to perform their defensive duties effectively, holding off the home side's attempts at a revival before breaking to score a third. Dixon, having played a part in Chelsea's first two goals, looked very much at home at Kenilworth Road, and again, he was born in Luton. John Dreyer got himself into a mess. Chelsea ended a tough month with a convincing victory. the Coventry skipper to take the free kick. Well one and Drinkle back off the post into the arms of Shilton. Could have been a goal in the first minute. And short, Sage supporting the cord. And the cord now left foot and deep. Right is there. Pickering's there. Classically simple goal. Two against one here. The one is Downs. He's taken the divot. The cord has taken the ball. Pickering's header. And plenty of time for Trevor Hebert. Downs. And speedy with a popular villain. Emerson to Downs. Winkle. Nicely done, Smith. And Speedy, what a good goal. Beautifully worked. And Speedy took it well. But there's a lot of credit in the build-up there. Oh, he's hammered through. But well, it was a tremendous finish. 
but defences ought not to be caught by sucker punches like that. Plays. Battled for it well. And now sets Saunders away again. And in it goes by Ramage. With a minute to go, Derby have made it 4-1. Coming up, 25 seconds of footage that pretty well summarises Everton's season. It starts with great promise before descending into disappointment and frustration. The visitors, having overcommitted to attack at Loftus Road, then failed to legislate for the speed on the break of Roy Wegerley. A new £1 million signing from Luton set up the only goal for Andy Sinton, allowing Rangers to pull a little further away from the relegation zone. Everton, top in October, are now stuck in mid-table. Young, young he scored. Big young is usual yeah. come up for a corner and get and, the ball. And uh, yeah, they won down again. Uh, it, it really is amazing their form. It is, as you rightly say, up and down. I mean, they've battled well. They've battled back to get into this game. Mark Hughes coming in with a goal now, and that's one all. And you can see the anger as he runs back past yeah. all the players. He's thrown the goalkeeper <laughs> the ball, thrown four there, five there. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. he, you know, so you could see the frustration. And there's Mark again on the boy. I mean, you can't accuse them for not battling. Well, I, I mean, think that's go. correct. Young they're Robbins, the, with the, the head of the... You can't accuse them that, Jim. That's no. the one thing I do feel. The Fergie's teams are battling, but they get no breaks but at all. The, nothing. The, well, I mean, this is a terrible breaks scramble. Breaks or here, lack of concentration or what? I don't know what it is, but... Obviously, things are not going right for them. And that's a pretty soft goal by Alan Colt there. Howard's got City buzzing a little bit, hasn't he? Um, they seem to be struggling a bit, Millwall. This boy, David White, played on the wing a couple of weeks ago, and we, we did feel that if he went inside, he'd be more dangerous. Right. And, and dangerous he's been. He's finished up scoring both goals here. 